What's the difference between the plastic used to make your sunglasses and that used to make the bags you might use at the grocery store? Or the difference between the plastics that surround you and keep you safe when you're flying in a plane at 30,000 feet and that used to make your drinks bottle? Well, the answer to both of those questions is probably not much. A tweak of atomic structure is all it takes to generate very different material characteristics. Chemistry is a science of subtlety. Let's look at the nuanced world of polymers. This is ASU. Do you know what, as a human, you share with the plastic bottle? Well, both of you and the plastic bottle are a result of polymers, large macromolecules that make up of different chemical units called monomers. DNA that stores your genetic information is a naturally occurring biopolymer. And polyethylene is a synthetic polymer that is found in common plastics. Polymers are not only a part of us, but it has transformed our lives in modern society. This is why polymers have a significant place when discussing the chemistry of modern materials. Different polymers result from monomers combining in different ways. For example, you could have a polymer that is a result of a single monomer repeating in a chain-like fashion. Another example would be if two different monomers alternate with one another in a polymer chain. How the monomers are organized and the types of atoms present in a monomer can influence the polymer's physical and chemical properties. The most common form of plastics that are found in our daily lives, like plastic bottles, grocery bags, clear wrapping using the kitchen, and modern day water pipes are made predominantly with different types of polyethylene. Let's pause for a minute here and think about how different each of these examples are. A grocery bag certainly looks and feels quite different from a hard, sturdy water pipe. And these are again quite different from clear, thin plastic wraps that help us store leftovers. So how can they all be examples of polyethylene? The answer lies in the polymer structure and how it in turn affects the density to form various types of polyethylene. To create polyethylene, ethylene monomers with a carbon-carbon double bond polymerize to create a simple hydrogen carbon chain. The chains can vary in length and some chains will be short and some can be long. High and low pressure processes can be used to create branches to the main polyethylene chain to create different variations. Less branches mean that polyethylene chains can pack close to one another, resulting in higher density. In comparison, polyethylene chains with a lot of branching cannot pack together easily, resulting in lower density. Think about a water pipe. You would want your pipe to have some flexibility, but for the most part, you would want it to be strong and durable to be able to hold and carry water. So it is not surprising that high density polyethylene, HDPE, is most often used to make pipes and fittings. High density polyethylene contains little branching, so the linear polymers can pack closely together to create more durable, rigid product, and some presence of branching does allow for movement. Oppositely, what type of polyethylene would be used to create the clear plastic wrap found in your kitchen? As you know, plastic wrap is quite flexible. You could take a piece of it, squeeze it into a ball with your hand, or stretch it out to cover a dish. Low density polyethylene, LDPE, allows the plastic wrap to be flexible because these polymers include more branching than high density polyethylene. Due to this, 
the polymers are less tightly packed. And this allows us to mold its shape to what we need it to be. So what can seem like tiny differences in atomic architecture can have profound impacts on material behavior and properties. But it is also these fundamental differences that allow plastics to be so versatile, allowing us to create materials that vary greatly in their strength, ductility, weight, and other characteristics. It is for good reason that plastics have become so ubiquitous in their usage. The next step is to develop a sustainable usage of such an incredible material. This was ASU. Thanks for watching.